Welcome to GeoDocker, the geospatial documentation framework. I'm Eric. We're going to run through a quick deliverable, whether you are a scientist, engineer, or citizen who wants to document something in your neighborhood, in your project area, or just something you want to tell the world about. We are working with version 0.3.63 of the GeoDocker. We call this Jellyfish. Uh, we are in alpha mode, which means we are at the beginning. Let me just walk you around quickly. Here's the menu items. Docker is the one that's what we're going to be working on. Map, browse, sync, and identity are not yet complete. Let me show you quickly how we get here. So we can just go to geodocker.com. Uh, this is our splash screen. We explain to you what we are doing. This is the alpha mode. All we want is to make sure that you understand what alpha is. It basically means that we are implementing things daily, weekly, monthly. So we're trying to keep everything going and adding new things. So it's kind of an experiment that's ongoing. But what I'm showing you should be stable and you should be able to get to it from Alpha G Docker. So you can see I have this already set up, but I want to show you the beginning. So the beginning, we are a traffic control inspector. Inspection. This is a little big for me, so I bring it down to H5. And since I want it to be nice on a page, preferably the first page. We have it at the right. We're going to be doing a southbound signage inspection. So southbound signage inspection. So we're going to right align that also. So the first things we want on any good photo log is we want an index of our photo and we want a map of our photo. And now we need our photos. So at this point I should explain to you all of these photos have GPS tags attached to them. In another video we will show you how to use photos that do not have GPS tags. And I use Android's Open Camera app. You can download it at the camera store. I'll have a link in the comments or rather in the documentation for this video. But it basically allows you to lock the camera so it doesn't take pictures without tags. Because once you start relying on documenting photos with GPS tags, you want to make sure that you're not wasting your time when you get to the GeoDocker and realizing you have to locate some of these photos. Uh, within the index, we can turn on the date. These are all taken on the same day, so not that interesting. But if you're observing a project over a month, you may want to have different dates. Sometimes your project might be more interesting in reverse chronological order. So you can s select the sort by date. So here's chronological order. And let's look at reverse chronological order. So, let's go to the photos. So the photos on our map, this is zoomed in a little too much, so we're going to go out to 200 feet. So that scale is set up to be 1 inch, so 200 feet, 500 feet, whatever your engineer or scientist prefers, or whatever you're most comfortable with looking at. Entirely up to you. So it looks like we got three photos here. Let's take a look at what these photos are looking at. Um, this is westbound traffic, so we are facing westbound. Let's see what else we got. This is westbound traffic, but we are facing east, so this is our one way. So let's label this westbound stop. 
So stop before left turn to southbound closure. So when you turn at this, when you turn here, when you turn left, you're going to run into a closure. And our trouble started with seeing people going the wrong way on a one way. So if you wanted to get past the closure, you would actually have to follow the westbound. So traffic beyond westbound stop. So we got another photo here. That one's labeled. This one's not, but it's the same thing, so we just delete it. So now we got our photos here, one and two. So this is where all the trouble starts. You basically need to go through the stop if you want to get past the closure, but I can show you where that is. But here's our photos going down this street. So we're going to document our journey at quarter block intervals. So first quarter, quarter approach. Limited signage. I say limited because when we look at this, we see that 35W detour is for on-ramp closure prior to current southbound closure. So that detour does not really apply to people that wanted to go southbound. It only applied to the, the people that wanted to get on the ramp from 35W, so that's over here. The only other traffic control appears to be these big cones and they don't really do anything but keep you going forward. So let's go to the half approach. Half approach, just your normal signage, right, left lane must turn left. Um, Stevens Avenue 36, the city probably should be cutting all that, but there's no signage for the traffic control, so we're just going to say that. Halfway approach. No signage for southbound closure. So we'll go to the last photo. This is a quarter approach, or three quarters rather. That's our terminology. I'm not a traffic control engineer, so this just makes sense to me. But it should be pretty intelligible to the people making these decisions or rather the lack of the decisions or the lack of the inspections. We do not know because we are just a concerned citizen trying to document the project that we are witnessing in front of our yards. So the three quarters approach limited visibility on, on one way. So I'll just pull it up so you can see. So the city probably should have been cutting this tree but that's an existing one-way sign. You get to this point here and all you got is a cat in front of you and you're scratching your head and you're either confused, frustrated, or angry. And I assume if you're angry you turn right here to get to that alleyway so you can go up further past this closure. Um, if we were being the most generous traffic control engineer, we would have had some sort of signage calling for a detour to go down Nicollet. But, again, I don't make traffic control decisions, so I don't know what feasibilities go into this. Um, but we're basically done with, with our documentation. Um, we could look at it one more time, but often it's easier just to look at it in print mode. So we're just going to go into print mode and look at this traffic con contron? No. Control. So traffic control inspection. Southbound signage inspection. So the layout mode makes it easy to edit it, but it still wants to keep the layout properly. So you'll see if you edit anything, things get updated. So we're just looking at our general discussion items for annotation. Um, maybe we want to show where that stop actually would be a detour 
Right, you'd have to actually go to a detour all the way down to 37th if you wanted to get past the closure. And then we just have our photos. So the only other thing is if you're taking large photos, you can compress them. So we're compressing those and the footer. So we call ourselves Traffic Control Inspectors Inc. You could put in your own name in there, whatever you'd want but that just ends up on as the footer on each page. Each page has the date on it. Um, let's see, each photo has the date here. Um, I think it's kind of redundant, but let's just leave that in there. So let's print now. Um, on the print screen for Chromium, really all you have to do is be aware that sometimes these margins don't get set correctly but otherwise the layout mode is made to be the size of a page. So we calculate everything based on what the layout. Everything's in your browser, everything gets downloaded to your browser, nothing's sitting on the server, nothing's being calculated by the server. The only thing the server is doing right now at GeoDocker, it's downloading the web app and it's doing some sync negotiation. So if you have two computers and you want to sync the information on them, it'll get you guys talking. But once you're talking, it doesn't take any information. Basically, we're trying to be as hands-off and privacy-friendly as possible. We want you to control all of this. I just want to give you good deliverables. So let's go find that deliverable. It's a PDF now. Uh, the browser turned it into a PDF. The browser just took what was the web page and turned it into a, a properly formatted sheet of paper. So here's our page one. Here's our page two. You'll find that these are working links. So if someone has something specific they're, they're told to look at, they can just find it in the index and click on it. Um, we'd like to eventually get that functionality into the map. There's some other functionality we have in alpha mode. You can draw things and save them with the map, but we'll look at that in another video. I'm hoping to get several of these videos out together so I explain all the features together. So we'll do it one more time, geodocker.com. This is your alpha mode understanding. And this is your loading screen. There shouldn't be anything but your computer loading the program. Once it's saved on your computer, the only thing that changes is if we change the version. You know, if we bump it up to 0.4, you're likely going to have to re-download it. But that shouldn't matter because it's an offline app. It's not going to stop functioning if you don't have internet and you're out there doing something in the world. Anything I do is not going to change that. So, this was GeoDocker, the geospatial documentation framework. I'm Eric, and I hope you have a good day.